Bitcoin surged to 6,900 plus, then dropped a couple hundred with some negative news. The SEC has rejected eight ETF proposals. Now, this doesn't mean that all have been rejected. However, that is quite a heavy blow. My name is Michael Kubera. Let's get into some ETF talk. The market cap of all cryptos is around $209 billion right now. Bitcoin has dropped from 6,900 plus to 6,485 currently. If you go on the subreddit for Bitcoin, a lot of people are disappointed. They're negatively influenced by these decisions. And we're going to be discussing about that. But before we get into the names and the ETFs that were rejected, let's talk about the Winklevoss twins right before. So they were rejected most likely because even though they became billionaires, sure, they made a lot of money with crypto. They are respectable. The SEC isn't doing anything personal against them. It's just that they're looking at their reputation. They're looking at Bitcoin. It's highly volatile in their eyes. They're looking at the supporters, the institutional investors, and they're realizing, well, this is a completely different world. Bitcoin, the Winklevoss twins, I mean, we don't want to be accepting something that puts us in jeopardy. We have some big support and we don't want to lose that support. And if we suddenly pick sides with the Winklevoss twins, some of these guys are going to be upset. So if they are going to be giving support to any ETF, it's most likely people who come from their side, the institutional investors, aka SIBO. So that is the one ETF, or at least the one major ETF that is still Still on the market and that has been delayed it is the SIBO plus Vanek ETF there was another one launched in July from Bitwise but it's probably not gonna pass the SEC has disapproved the ETFs due to multiple factors one of them is that unidentifiable participants can manipulate the market and well you kind of can't identify who owns a Bitcoin address unless they reveal it that it's theirs because that's the whole point of cryptocurrencies it's not supposed to be anonymous but it's supposed to be secure and a lot of people who have crypto don't want others to know because it's like a hey look at me you robbed me target and by that I mean most rich people aren't going to advertise not that stealing crypto is easy usually the weak link is human error so if someone's saying hey I got a million dollars in crypto people are going to be examining that person his businesses his interests you don't want that the SEC views Bitcoin as the wild west and even though some people may fully disagree with the SEC's decision who are on that board they still don't want to be coming out because it's their reputation that's on the line. A lot in the crypto community are disappointed with the SEC, but guys, come on, it's not the end of the world. Bitcoin has been doing fine for so many years without the ETFs. It's not like this is the major factor. A lot of people think it is because a lot of people were waiting for the bull market due to the SEC ETFs. But that's the whole problem. It wasn't going to change Bitcoin's direction one way or another. It has a slight influence in the short term, but in the long term perspectives, there's so many major events that have been happening over the past couple of years that usually most of them don't have a large impact. For example, some people thought that China banning ICOs is going to crash everything. Oh my God, the prices are going to fall in September. And yeah, sure, there was a small little impact of that, but then crypto went on. It's like everybody forgot about that. And then another news event and another news event, a terrorist attack. Oh no, an exchange was hacked. Great, but it still kept rising in price. If an ETF was approved, that's awesome because institutional investors are gaining on board Bitcoin quickly at a faster pace than if they were to do it themselves usually. However, in the long run, they're still going to be hearing about Bitcoin more often. Even in the bear market, there's so many Many new companies and positions being available to blockchain that it's very hard for somebody who's investing in the stock market not to hear about it not to gain a certain interest in it eventually they're like well at first I thought it was a scam but then I started looking into it and it made a little bit more sense three major ETF companies have launched ETFs these were the ones who got rejected one of them is ProShares five ETFs were launched from direction spelled with an X and two were launched from Granite shares. So ProShares and Direction were based off of SIBO and CME. People thought it would be a little bit of a safer bet since they're based off of it and SIBO and CME are regulated. The SEC still disapproved those because even though the exchanges that their ETFs would be based upon are legitimate, the ETFs themselves, sketchy to them. The SEC has released a statement. The summary is basically due to the risk of market manipulation and fraudulent transactions. 
they're not going to proceed with these ETFs. Other than the SIBO plus VANEC ETF and Bitwise, it doesn't seem that there's anything else on the market. There could be more, but at this rate, the only one that's gaining traction is the VANEC, which has been delayed, which some of the people who have gotten ETFs in the past before non-crypto related ETFs said it is a very long and arduous process. The SEC has many delays. And usually when there's a full 75 day delay, uh, they're, they're doing their research. They're trying to make sure that all the plot holes are filled. And if everything looks good, then it's going towards a positive direction. So it's like a 50-50 coin toss. I mean, maybe the SEC is gonna approve it, maybe the SEC isn't, but at the end of the day, does it really change Bitcoin? I don't think so. And we have to get that straight, guys. And ETF is essentially exchange traded funds. It's this giant pool that's traded on the stock market. Institutional investors are able to look at it and it's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, if I invest in it, even though I'm not investing in crypto itself, it's easier for me and I'm still able to bet on the market of Bitcoin. It's a safer bet for those of you who want to play with it. On the traditional stock market, there's ETFs and there's mutual funds, which you can go into. And it's like this grouping of various stocks. However, mutual funds have higher fees and lower liquidity than ETFs. So those of you who want high daily liquidity, an ETF would be the safer bet. And sure, Bitcoin futures have come on the market, but not everybody's interested in that. A great resource to learn about the stock market and these trading terms is Investopedia. Also, if you're new to investing cryptocurrencies, the stock market, really you can use a game on Investopedia. It's this virtual reality where essentially you're buying stocks, holding them, seeing if you make a profit or if you make a loss you're able to virtually record all these transactions. And hey, if you make some money, then you're able to play with real money on the stock market. If you lose some money, try and learn from your lessons, try and play it again and try and get better at it. Or you might decide that it's just not for you. That is that. Are institutional investors important for us? Yes, however, the crypto sphere must understand that we gotta keep going with whatever work it is. We can't let these small little events impact us. Sure, it is a little bit saddening that it's not moving at the pace we'd like it to, but it doesn't matter. Look at the long-term picture, guys. We've been doing just fine without the ETFs. We don't need them. If they come on board, great. If they don't, whatever. Thanks so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. We are approaching 19,000 subscribers, slow but steadily. Thank you, guys. And if you haven't seen my other channel, check it out. Link is in the description below. Approaching 64,000. See you guys tomorrow.